Welcome to our lecture online. So now we're going to do a simple example to try and illustrate how the change in entropy occurs. So we have an example where we have a container with one kilogram of water at 100 degrees centigrade and another container of water with one kilogram of water at zero degrees centigrade. We now provide a conducting path which allows heat to travel from where it's hot to where it's cold when heat is extracted out of the hot container, that's negative Q, when heat is added to the cold container, that is positive Q by definition. The final state will be when both containers will be at the same temperature, when all the excess heat over here ended up in the other container, they're now at the same temperature, they're now at thermal equilibrium, heat flow will stop, that's the final state, this was the initial state, and so you can see that this container went from 100 degrees centigrade to 50 degrees centigrade with an average temperature of 75 degrees centigrade or 348 Kelvin. And this container went from 0 degrees centigrade to 50 degrees centigrade with an average temperature of 25 degrees centigrade or 298 Kelvin. When the temperatures are different, we are at a low entropy state because that, that way we allow heat to flow from where it's hot to where it's cold. When the temperatures are the same, when we're in thermal equilibrium, that's a high entropy state, that's when heat flow stops. So heat will continue to flow as long as the difference in temperature. As heat flows, entropy goes up. When heat stops flowing, entropy has reached its maximum value in this particular system. So let's calculate the change in entropy. And by definition, the change in entropy is the heat exchange divided by the temperature which is happens. Now, the reason why we have an approximation symbol there is because we're not really supposed to use the average temperature. We're supposed to integrate over the change in temperature, and we're going to show you how to do that in the next video. But for this video, this is close enough. It actually, there's not a lot of difference between using the average temperature and actually integrating as long as the temperature difference is not that large as it is in this case. So let's go ahead and apply what we know. So this is going to be equal to the heat coming out of the hot reservoir, which is the mass of the water times the specific heat of the water times the change in the temperature. Notice that the change in temperature is going to be a negative change because we go from 100 degrees centigrade to 50 degrees centigrade. That's a negative change. And we divide that by the average temperature, which is 348 Kelvin. We add to that to the MC delta T, which is MC delta T at the cold reservoir as opposed to the hot reservoir and we divide that by the average temperature. In this case, the average temperature is going to be 298 Kelvin. Let's now plug in what those are. Now notice that at the hot reservoir, we're dividing by a larger delta, by a larger denominator. At the cold reservoir, we're dividing by a smaller number, which means the magnitude of this will always be bigger than the magnitude of that. Since the temperature change here is positive and the temperature change here is negative, the larger absolute value will always be larger when it's a positive value there and a negative value there. So when you sum the two up, you always end up with a positive entropy change. Let me illustrate that. This is approximately equal to one kilogram for the mass. The specific heat is 4,187 or 86 joules per kilogram per Kelvin degrees or centigrade degrees times the change in the temperature. We go from 100 to 50, that's minus 50 Kelvin. And we add, oh, we divide that by 348 Kelvin. And then we add that to one kilogram times 4,186 kilograms per, not kilograms, that's joules, that's heat, joules per kilogram per Kelvin times a change of a positive 50 Kelvin because we go from zero to 50 degrees centigrade and then we divide that by 298 Kelvin for the average temperature. When we calculate that we get the following values. So we have 4186 times 50 divided by, oop, let me try it again, 4186 times 50 divided by 348 equals, that gives us 601.44. 601.44, and the units are 
the kilograms cancel, the Kelvin cancels, so we have joules per Kelvin, which are the units for entropy. And it's going to be a negative quantity because we have a negative 50K there. So negative plus on the second term we get 4186 times 50 divided by 298. And so there we get 702.35. 702.35 joules per Kelvin and notice that the positive quantity will always be bigger than the negative quantity because when we're subtracting or ex uh, pulling heat away from the hot reservoir that's done at a higher temperature so we divide by a bigger number and when we add it to the cold reservoir the cold reservoir will always be at a colder temperature until they reach thermal equilibrium so the magnitude of this will always be larger than the magnitude of this so the sum of the two always without exception will be a positive value which means that whenever we exchange heat from where it's hot to where it's cold the entropy will always go up again without any exception so adding these two together we get 702.35 minus 601.44 so we get 100.91 100.91 joules per Kelvin for the change in entropy in this process. Notice it's a positive quantity, it always will be positive. If you end up with a negative quantity, you did something wrong. So now we understand when there's heat exchange, two things happen. Entropy will always go up, heat will be extracted from where it's hot and dumped into where it's cold, and whenever that happens in nature, anywhere in the universe, entropy will always go up when there's heat exchanged. So now we've learned how to do this by using the average temperature. In the next video, we're going to do it actually using integration to get the exact value, but you'll find out that this is pretty close to the value we'll get when we actually integrate over the process. And that's how it's done.